Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN. Good evening and welcome to Real Talk on SABC3. My name is Azania Mosaka. Jada Pinkett Smith recently announced on her online show that her grandmother taught her how to please herself at the impressionable age of nine. This made me wonder how the rest of the world handles the delicate conversation of the birds and the bees in this modern day society. As a parent myself, I understand the excruciating deliberation that happens before you make the final decision that the time is right to have the talk. Having a young adult as my firstborn, I've come to the realization that this conversation is a continuous one well into our children's adulthood. Tonight, we are dedicating this hour to an open talk about sex education for our children. But please note that tonight's discussion is one of a sensitive nature and viewer discretion is advised. Now, Foundation Phase educator Alicia Tolker, who has a BA in Child and Family Psychology and an Honours in Psychology, has been working with young children for many years. And she's here to give us insights on how and when and where the sex talk with our children should happen. Welcome to Real Talk, Alicia. Thank you. So are you a parent yourself? And how old are your children? And most importantly, have you had the sex talk with them? Um, yes, I'm a parent myself. And my kids are, I've got two boys, mm -hmm. one age seven and the other one nine. And to be honest, we haven't had the full sex talk yet. But we have, there has been times when um, it has been mentioned or something related to it has mm -hmm. been mentioned. And I would um, speak about it, but not to an extent where I've finished the topic because I'm also just human. Yes and I'm being honest, I haven't been brave enough to um, get into it. Yeah, because a lot of parents detail. have a sense of trepidation about engaging or even starting, initiating this conversation. Why do you think that's so? Um, it's uncomfortable. I mean, that's why um, I'm uncomfortable. It starts, it also started with how we were brought up. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, our generation, um, sex talk was taboo. Our parents never used to talk to us about sex. And children mainly learn through what's modeled to them. And because it wasn't modeled to me, it's, gonna, it's, a, it's actually going to, for me, this is going to be the first step. I'm going to be taking the first step yes. in uh, doing something new in which I believe in. And, but because it wasn't modeled to me, it's not as easy. But if I start it, yes. I'm going to be modeling it to my children. And then soon they'll be able to do it easily when they have children one day. So how did you learn? I'll tell you how I learned about, about sex. It was from picking up stompies out in the streets from this conversation, that conversation. It was from um, accidentally popping in a VHS tape <laughs> into the VHS from my brother's stash. It was in the middle and we popped it in with my sister and then next thing, there's an adult movie on. And we were shocked, we stood there like in shock as if we'd done something Dirty, what? yeah, something wrong. Um, and then the rest of it was media, it was television and just piecing everything together. And then of course, through your own experience as you go along. How did you first learn? That's kind of like in the same ways, hearing things here and there, also from your friends. I think I've, I learned most from my friends. And this is what's happening in this day and age. Um, more so and more in different negative ways yes. they're learning about sex from their friends and this is why it becomes more and more important for us as parents to speak about this earlier in mm -hmm. life because your primary school child your seven-year-old your grade one is on shares a playground with your 
12 year old your child in grade seven yeah, right and they can pick up stompies like you <laughs> say <laughs> from those children which is much worse than picking up stompies from adults yes because so alicia we sent you out on the field you were kind enough to help us with this experiment alicia gracefully agreed to do some pi work for real talk hanging with a group of kids aged between seven and nine years old this was not an attempt to teach the children anything new but more to engage them at that level on the things that they already aware of when it comes to their bodies as boys and girls. This was certainly a very interesting conversation. Take a look. Okay, guys, I'm going to ask you guys a few questions. Okay? I just want to know how you would describe um, the difference between a boy and a girl. The difference between a boy and a girl is that most, most times boys must be playing with their cars and girls shouldn't be playing with cars and girls should be playing with dolls and boys shouldn't be playing with Okay, so the difference is, is what they play with, okay? Are there any other differences? Yes. The difference between girls and boys is that girls are much more cleaner than boys and boys to make a lot of mess. I think the difference between girls and boys is that the clothes, we wear nice and sparkly clothes, they wear rag. They wear raggedy clothes? Yes. Okay, now let's hear from the boys. Boys, what do you have to say? The difference about boys and girls, girls have long hair and boys have short hair. Oh, wow, there's a lot of differences, eh? I learned a lot from you guys today. I'm sure our private parts is not the same as them. Which, which places on your body would you consider your private parts? Yes? Um, our butt and our vagina. Okay. And our breasts. And our breasts. That's on girls, eh? Yes. Do you have a body part that you consider your private part? Ye yes or no? Yes. I use it for using the toilet. You're using the <laughs> toilet. Okay, so that's your private part. Yes. Why do we call it private parts? Yes. Because nobody must see it. Because nobody must see it, yes. Nobody is allowed to touch it. Nobody must touch it. And it's private in our bodies. It's the most private thing that we, no one is allowed to see. No one, okay, so nobody's allowed to see and touch because it's private, because that's what private means. What differences are you going to see in your, what's your body when you grow up? Yes. Change. You're going to change. How are you going to change? We are going to get bigger hands. Bigger hands. Bigger legs, a bigger face, a bigger neck, things like that. Okay. What about our other private parts? What happens to those when we grow up? Our private parts become bigger. Bigger? Girls get periods. And I think we get more hair on our legs. On our legs. And on our private parts. On our private parts too. Do we know um, where babies come from? Mommies and daddies have seeds. The mommy seed is called an egg and the daddy seed is called a sperm. The seeds need to connect so that they can have a baby. How do you think, the rest of you, babies, um, how do they get into mommy's stomach? God creates a baby. He sends an angel to put the baby in the tummy. Okay. I think that babies grow in their mother's stomach. So they just start growing there. Okay, so do you guys know how the sperm and the egg get together? Yes? Kissing and then the, then the, the, do you the think it could come be, out. You think it could be through kissing? Okay, but it was very nice talking to all of you. And you guys are very smart. You must continue learning and being interested in everything around you and about yourself, okay? Oh, Alicia did such a fantastic job and we're grateful for the kids for telling us what it is they know. Such innocence, isn't it? Yes, really. So, so when do you know though, Alicia, that the time is right for you to have the conversation with your kids? Um, there, it shouldn't be a conversation, in fact. It shouldn't be a talk that you've made an appointment yeah. with your child. It should start as early as two. Do you wait for them to ask questions? Um, no, you actually find teachable moments where you, um, for example, um, if you see a couple with a baby and the baby's giving them trouble, 
um, and you ask, well, this is not exact, this is linked to sex talk, and this is actually what I should have said before, that yes, you start as early as you can, but yeah. it doesn't have to be directly about sex. It has to be with uh, all the issues related to sex, mm -hmm. like um, relationships and trust and respect and love. So it definitely has to be appropriate for the phase in which the child is in. Yes. So this was a group aged between seven and nine. But if we go beyond that, say between 10 and 13, the conversation shifts. And even in puberty, the conversation changes, right? Actually, as early as possible, as soon you can, as from age five, you can um, tell them about the exact um, process, as the little girl explained. Um, with but what do you think with what the, the boy stuff. had to say about uh, God puts the baby in the mother's stomach? Should we, should we allow children or should we talk in euphemisms or should we talk direct, using direct actual biological language? We should use direct actual biological language, but we shouldn't take God away from it, especially knowing that this child has uh, the belief uh, that this child is Christian and yeah. it's what he believes in. Or in, it doesn't matter what he believes in, but if they believe that God put the baby there. Yes, God also works with the system. God works with the biological system, and this is how he planned it. God's also smart, yeah. and this is how he planned it. As much as they love to believe in the magic of it all, it's, it's better for them to know um, the true uh, process from the beginning. Yes. Um, in as, in, on their level as possible. Let's come back to parents quickly because children, as you said, on the playground will mingle, they'll pick up things from different children. How do you make sure that what your child knows is not overridden by what other children say on the field? This is exactly, once again, coming back to the reason why you need to speak to your child from as early as possible because mm. you need to create that open relationship. You need to be your child's first resource when it comes to anything to do with sex. Yes. And you, as when the earlier you start it, the the better you are going to be at being that person because right. they're going to be used to it and they're going to be comfortable with only coming to you. And even if they do hear something on the playground they're gonna come ask you about it and you can give them the correct information. And it's about letting them feel comfortable that they can do that. Yes. Alicia, job well done with our kids from earlier on and thank you for being here. We'll have you back on the show a little bit later. Well, this conversation goes beyond the foundation phase of the children's life as we have established. But after the break, we tackle the precious early years of puberty. See you after this. Welcome back to Real Talk on SABC3, where the stage is yours. When young girls' and boys' bodies go through changes and they've had no one to turn to, the myths and shame surrounding the most natural of bodily functions is heightened. Take a look at this clip of an organization whose mission is to provide comfort and menstrual health education to young women and girls from disadvantaged and at-risk communities. But the most important thing is that you must know if you go to menstruation, it is something that is supposed to happen to your body. It is something that is normal. It is okay. And when, if you feel uncomfortable, if you want to talk, talk to someone that you trust. Do you have people that you trust around you? Yes. Don't ever feel that there is something wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. Everything is so okay. In fact, there is everything okay with the menstruation. The only thing that you need to do is to talk about it. Do you understand, girls? I had a chat with the boys in the, diff, in the other classroom. So it was the very, very interesting uh, topics, in fact, about three or four. So we talked about puberty. We talked about sex. We talked about love and respect. And lastly was anger and violence. There is stigmatization and all the stuff that men in nursing, something else. But we are trying to change that to show that it's not only for women, but also males. With me on the couch is Sharon Gordon, who is the CEO of Dignity Dreams and is no stranger to opening up on discussions about sex and sexuality. Having previously served on the Sexology Board of South Africa to now channeling her skills to bringing meaning to young girls' and boys' lives. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Thanks for having me. Well, I've seen you in action. So I know you can be very direct. You don't miss, mince your words when it comes to the importance of this conversation. Not at all, because I think that you should be having very honest conversations with your children. 
you know, as that child comes out of your body, you should be talking about normal body parts. So, you know, as I always say, we don't call this our smelly welly or these are feely wheelies. Yeah. So why is our vagina my, my, down, my down there? Where's mm. down there? Australia, you know, I mean, like really. So, or a penis, a willy. Mm -hmm. Call it a penis, call it a vagina. And I was delighted at the little girl who said, well, my body part is a vagina. Yes. And, yes. you know, she didn't call it anything else. And I think that that is stunning. Well done to that mother. But Sharon, we live in a very conservative society. Let's be honest. I think even we know that even having this conversation, we have to be aware of people's sensitivities and where they feel these boundaries should be. Okay. So the value and the importance of it must be foremost, surely. Well, look, when people raise that with me, um, in my culture, in my conservative, I go, well, how's that working for you? Mm. Because we live in a world where sexual violence is the highest it's ever been. And I firmly believe that unless we are educating our children from the day they are born about their rights, about their bodies, yeah. about their body parts, what sex is, how it's meant to feel, then you're empowering that young girl or that young boy to say, no, you're not allowed to do that to my body. Mm -hmm. You know, because, because if we keep quiet about it, this extreme shame and embarrassment and blackmailing about our bodies is going to continue. But the thing is, we're also afraid to express or talk about sex because it means we might have to be honest about the pleasures of it, that it is enjoyable. Well, I think that that's the biggest problem is because let's not talk about, let's talk about sex education. It, we talk about eggs and sperm, we talk about disease, and we talk about rape. That's sex. Mm. Really? Mm. Not in my world. In my world, sex is about pleasure and respect and exploring my boundaries and being able to say no and understanding my own body and understanding the pleasure of my own body and understanding that that's what my body is meant to to do mm -hmm. it's not i'm in love yes because you know i remember going to movies when i was probably about 14 or 15 and some dude put his hand in my lap you know yes and it was like oh i must love him <laughs> you know because what else makes your body feel like that yes had i known that that's what your body does right. when you touch your genitals it would have been a different conversation, I think. Absolutely, so that you don't mince, mix it all up. But there are lots of myths you encounter in your conversations with young people, the myths that they've encountered about it all. What have you heard? Well, look, I mean, just let's talk about menstruation, about it being dirty. Really? The fact that I can produce the next generation is dirty? Mm -hmm. Because it wouldn't happen if I didn't menstruate. Right. So, you know, let's start honoring that and respecting that as a starting point. Mm -hmm. Let's start talking about the fact that um, boys get erections when they are aroused. Sometimes it's not even a nice thing that arouses you. Let's talk about the fact that girls lubricate because this thing about lubrication blows my mind. You know, in some, in some cultures, it's a bad thing yes. to lubricate. Yes. In some ones, you know, the wetter the better. And the truth is, that's what your body does to protect you. It's mm -hmm. the way it protects you from pain. It's the way it protects you from diseases. And in the abuse situation, when somebody says to you, oh, well, you've enjoyed it because look how wet you are, you can turn around and say, hey, dude, that's what my body's meant to do. My yes. mommy told me when I was three. Mm. You know, so you empower. The point you made about rights, being you're, aware of our rights. And if we and understand and this function, we're able to locate it properly. Yeah, and you empower by telling the truth. You disempower by lying. Right. If you tell your child you were bought at pick and pay, is walking down the, 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 the aisles going, where's the baby aisle? Because they're not stupid. <laughs> oh, Sharon, we've got a caller because we do want you to be a part of this conversation, not just through your voice notes, but your calls as well. Hello, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Hello. The name is Vincent. I'm contacting you from Gauteng. I think this is an excellent discussion, but I think there is a very real danger out there of children who are unaware of the dangers and the predators that are out there. And to think that they are not out there is silly and futile. I think it is so vital that parents continue to enrich and inform children at a very young age 
that there is really a danger out there of predators. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for calling. Um, and I like the point that Vincent makes because it means that we have to balance these issues. And it's also a gateway to talking about abuse on one hand, um, but also reflecting on the fact that this is normal at the same time. Yeah. Look, I think that as a parent, your biggest fear is if I share too much, am I sexualizing my yes. child? And I would argue that you're not because you're empowering your child to be able to step back and say, hey, this is my body. I'm allowed to do this um, for myself. I don't have to do this for anybody else, and I can report to anybody who's taking advantage of me mm -hmm. because I understand what my body is meant to do. And this thing about predators is huge because you don't know who the other person is. Yes. You know, and so we get to the sexting discussion. If somebody asks you for a picture of your genitals, say no, mm -hmm. because you don't want the picture of your genitals out there one day. And I always say to the children that I talk to, because I talk to a lot of children about sex, is think about it for one second. How would you feel if in 30 years time, your daughter mm. finds that picture of your genitals on the internet. No, I think safety online has to be a part of this conversation, but let's look at the work that you're doing as an NGO, Dignity Dreams, because you help to provide girls with that dignity during a very sensitive period in their life when they're going through puberty, and you balance that with the conversation with the boys so that there's more empathy and understanding. Yes. So what we do is we manufacture and distribute washable um, sanitary wear, which really is very eco-friendly, and we should all be using it. This isn't a disadvantaged Absolutely. community product. Yeah. One of our pads is equivalent to 144 disposable pads. Mm. So from an eco-friendly point of view, it is vital yes. that we yes. change the way we think about it. But what it allows us is a step into the children's world. Mm -hmm. We get to them sort of standard, um, well, great, you know, I'm old, so it's standard four, grade six. You and me both. Yeah, yeah so it's grade yeah. six onwards. And the discussion goes around um, menstruation, menstrual health, and it gives us the ideal opportunity to talk about sex. Fantastic. Because what parents do is they say, now that you are having your period, you're not allowed to go near boys. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. go, but like, why not? Mm -hmm. you know, um, Absolutely, because then we can talk about contra contraception, which is all about uh, uh, good reproductive health. But you know what, Sharon, you are my kind of woman bold, empowered, and you say it like it is. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. Well, we'll get to a celebrity dad's a celebrity dad's perspective a little bit later on, on how he approaches the sex discussion with his three beloved boys, all of that after the break. Welcome back to Real Talk on SABC3, where the stage is yours. Thank you so much for staying with us. It is not easy to determine the best time to engage your children about sex. At times, you aren't aware that you are avoiding the topic, and sometimes it just seems as though it's way too early. Yanez Vermeeren is well known as a television heartthrob, formerly a presenter on SABC's Top Billing and Man Cave. When he's not on our television screens and producing riveting programs, he's a loving husband and doting dad. He joins us now on the Real Talk couch to share his views when it comes to talking sex with your children. Hi, Yanez. How are you doing? I'm good, thank Awkward you. Awkward conversations. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to see if you're turning red, if you've turned red yet. So, you have boys, how old are they? I've got a two-year-old, a four-year-old, and a 14-year-old who's watching right now. Ah, you told me to watch because... Yeah. Have you he had needs the talk to be educated, yeah. Have you had the talk with him? Have I had the talk? You know, when, when I was growing up, I had the talk very late with my parents. I knew everything what already. Was late? Late was probably around 14, 15. Ooh, okay. Way too late. So I knew everything already, and I remember with my mother, Every time we'd go to a movie and there'd be a sex scene, she'd get all shy and that would make me shy. And I'd think, this is weird. There's something and, wrong with what and we're seeing. I, grew, yeah. I kind of grew up with that awkwardness because that was the time. I mean, people didn't speak about sex. It was all taboo. Mm. Um, and sadly, I mean, I'm very open-minded. And I actually grew up in quite an open-minded family. So one would think that, yes, I would have those conversations. But when you're a parent for the first time, you don't know the rules. You don't know how to approach things. And 
it was only this past December yeah. that my son said to me, and I, I had the conversation with him, but probably when he was about 12 years old, that he said, you know, Dad, I walked in on you and your girlfriend. <sighs> yeah. And I saw everything <laughs> when I was about eight or nine years old. That's not how you wanted it to happen. And I bottled it up and I didn't say anything. And he obviously at that age didn't know much about it. Yes. But obviously I, I was intrigued by it. So I asked him, what did you see? And he described the entire scene for me. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> you can imagine as a parent. Yeah, what's going through your mind? Yeah. Were you thinking, what's my first response? What am yeah, I going to yeah, say yeah, first? Yeah. And then I thought, you know what? I've approached this completely wrongly. I should have had that conversation with him when he was eight or nine No, you should have locked the door. I should have locked, locked the door. I should have locked the door. should have stuck to missionary as well. Yes. So <laughs> what, what, what is your fear, though? What are you fearing about having the full-on conversation? You know, it's a lesson I've learned now because I've got, I've got the two young boys that yes, are growing up now. Yes, you can now, do things so differently. I'll do them. things differently and I'll have the conversation earlier. And the thing with today is there's so much information out there and you want them to get the right inf information. Yes. And unfortunately, if they're on social media, if they're on the internet the whole time, they've got access to all these tools, they, they could be getting the wrong information. Yes. And it's about safety as well. So um, I've made my mistakes and I've learned my lessons and I'll, I'll surely have those conversations earlier. But yes, it is an awkward conversation. And even for me, I mean, like I said, I'm quite liberal and open-minded. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine for, for other families in South Africa, if it's difficult for me, it must be difficult for most. Yes, I mentioned Jada Pinkett Smith earlier yeah. on at the mm -hmm. top of the show, who on her online show with her mother and her daughter, so three generations sitting together, uh, she talked about how she heard or learned about masturbation. And it was her grandmother, in fact, who told her about self-pleasing or self-pleasure. And during her 20s, that's all she did because she wasn't dating a lot until she met Will, Will Smith. So how did you learn growing up? Do you remember <laughs> being on the playground overhearing older boys or a I sibling think, perhaps? I think it was conversations with your friends at school, on the playground. I mean, in those days, we didn't have access to the internet. Yeah. Um, so it was definitely through, it was definitely through friends. Um, and, and that was probably a good way to find out, seeing I hadn't had the conversations with my, my parents. But today, like mm -hmm. I said, with all the dangers out there, you need to have those conversations earlier. You need to be open about it and you need to address it because if they're getting the, the information from the wrong people, it's, it's a major problem. Absolutely. So it's how are you going to do it with the younger ones? Well, uh, I've, are you going to read my, up? Are you going to get advice? I've changed my ways completely. With my son now, since he's, he's opened up to me about that incident, um, I mean, we talk freely about, about everything and anything. And, and, and I feel like we've got this open relationship now. If there's anything he wants to know, he can speak to me about it. And I'd like my, my, same, my, my, my younger kids to have that same relationship with yes. me. Yes. Uh, I'll tell you how I did it. How did you do it? <laughs> I got a pen and paper. Yeah. And I psyched myself up for the moment. Mm -hmm. The day was free. Yeah. And I called her into her room. Mm -hmm. And we sat down. I took the pen and paper and I drew the uterus. How old was she? <laughs> she was uh, 13. Okay. And I drew the uterus and I drew the, the, the penis. Yes. And I started to explain. Okay. Because there were already these questions yeah. coming up. Some kid yeah. had said something yes. on uh, the playground at school and I thought, I need to intervene because otherwise the narrative is just going to run away yep. Yep. and you have to step in there. 100%. But kept it biological. Yep. But with the years, she's mm -hmm. 20 now. Mm -hmm. you, th you know, is your child dating? Uh, uh, not yet, um, oh, but he, w he will be soon. He's 14. He's a, he's a late developer like yep. I was. Um, but there are conversations that we're having and we're talking about now that are applicable to his age. Yes. For example, yes. masturbation. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, these are things that we all go through as, as, as kids and, and you'd like to know about it and you'd like to be open and honest about these conversations. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wish you well. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be sweating bullets afterwards, but I, you'll I've be got, like you. I've got this, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll thank yourself afterwards that you actually did it. <laughs> Good luck, Yanis. Thank you. And hopefully no more stumbling into no, 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 <laughs> the, no, no. the doors happened, will be happened locked. To, happened to him twice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a story yeah. for another day. Another day. How does it story. happen to a kid twice? <laughs> <laughs> well, children learn about sexuality in several ways. And uh, one way is by asking questions. At the age of four, questions like where do babies come from is a huge favorite. So join me after the break as I chat to comedian Tol S. Mo, his wife Mome, and their eldest son TK, and they've brought along four-year-old daughter Kumo. It's going to be interesting.
Welcome back to Real Talk. As a comedian, it is definitely a prerequisite that you be outspoken and witty. Tolles Mo is well known for his X-rated stand-up comedy. He's one of the country's top comedians and a committed family man. His wife, Mome Mahlangu, is a stylist and fashion entrepreneur. How prepared is this well-recognized celebrity couple to answering their children's questions about sex and sexuality? The Mahlangu family is here and they have brought their superstar daughter, Kumo, as well as their eldest son, TK, with them. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> a special welcome to you, Kumo. Ah, where's my kiss? Blow Look me over there. Me. Blow, blow, blow his tante Azania. Yay. How are you, TK? I'm good, okay. I'm good, thank you. So I'm going to start with you, oh. TK, because the parents might say something else, but have they had the talk about sex with you? Yeah, like two years ago. Uh-huh. Two years ago, I had it with my dad, and yeah, I don't think it was really something I say was uncomfortable, but it, it was okay. Mm -hmm. it was okay yeah. What do you mean uncomfortable for you? No, no, no. For me, it was okay. I don't know if it was uncomfortable. For was it super for you? Super uncomfortable. Why? It's it's uncomfortable because sometimes you don't know. Um, I grew up in an environment where my parents didn't have the talk with me, so. I, I wouldn't know where should I start, where should I end, yeah. you know? And we kind of were like boys about it. We're very chilled with a, you know, conversation about girls. Are you dating? You know, what do you think about chicks? And it's like, no, dad, I don't think I'm on a date until... When you want to start dating? Daddy. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> in university or when? Where you want to start? Let me just talk. You said Let's hear you, daddy, Kumo. Daddy, Let's hear you. Daddy, daddy. Yes. You don't just really date, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So TK... TK and Daddy, no more dating. That's enough now. I'm tired of that. I said that so much. Of my What's life. wrong with okay. dating, Kumo? Dating is just not my life, actually. Oh. So, like, TK is too young to date, like, with a girlfriend. So, actually, my dad is, like, too smoky to, like, like actually have dates. Mm -hmm. So, uh... So I actually just tried the permission so like no one could ever have this. So like actually Yes, okay. Kumo. The but let me ask you okay. this. Let okay. me okay. ask you this because mm -hmm. I know that your parents have also talked to you about a couple of things. Tell me what is uh, what is it? Basco Bation? What is Basco what's Baby? Basco baby? baby, what's Basco Don't Baby? Say. Don't say I don't want to talk like Why can't he say Basco baby? baby? Okay. okay. Basco Explain baby to me. Like a girl gets top on a, a, a boy and then he does you do this. Oh, oh. <laughs> Mommy, oh, oh. please <laughs> step in okay, here. This, what is like, Pasco When baby? this happened, oh, we oh. were surprised because she just walked in our bedroom. We were busy talking, you know, and me and my husband were very affectionate. Yeah. So he was talking many kids with me and she just walks in our bedroom and she's like, guys, are you kissing or Pasco baiting? And we like, uh... No, Kumo, what's Bosco babying? Uh -huh. Then she explained it to us. Then oh. we were like, where did you see that? Like, oh, come on, guys, I know this. I don't no, know what she did. I don't but know. I, I don't, I don't lie. I, I'm so, speechless right now. So. But what did you say after that? Did you start to then correct what she knows about sex? Yeah, I'm like, actually, my name is Kumo Panda. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so, okay. Do you know what? What is Kumo Panda, yeah, by yeah. the way? Kumo, Do you know what? You. Do you it's know what? We, 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 we kind of, we always taught her that love is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And she needs to respect her body. And she always needs to know that um, the, the difference between the love of mommy and daddy and the difference between the love of, uh, from her brother and the love that she gets from other people outside. Mm -hmm. yes. So, I mean, we, we can't uh, raise them like they don't know what these things are. I mean, every time they turn on television, someone is kissing. Mm -hmm. you know? So we, they, they're always quick to ask, what is this? And they come up with their own names for it because they don't understand what it is. So she calls it... Basco baby. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what she calls it. So right. I mean, we let her do what she wants to do. Well, let her. Oh, but at some point, you're gonna have to have the hard yeah. talk. Yeah. I think this yeah. will to lead the record straight. With time, it leads to having that conversation. Do you, you know? do you worry about what she hears on the playground with other kids? Yes, I do. I mean, like I spend a lot of time with my kids, and I always mind what she says, especially when she comes from school. I yeah. have to ask. Who told you that? Where did you hear that from? You know, and if it's something that I can really have a conversation with, with her, then I do. Mm. Then we just talk about it. Like he, she knows a boyfriend and a girlfriend, 
but I've always told her that you are not going to have a boyfriend. You are still young. Yes, we so could see the reaction to dating. Yes, yeah, so that she's how. against dating. So would you say you're a conservative family or are you free? It sounds like the conversation flows quite easily. You know what? I don't think we're conservative. I mean, we're very, we very young parents, you know, and with TK, it's like for me, when I have the conversation with him, I just make it simple. I'm like, dude, I know you're growing. Your friends at school are dating, but I don't think you're ready for that. And I don't want you to go through the things I went through, you know, because yeah. I know what it's like. And... I think your future is much brighter than that, you know, and... They can avoid the mistakes. Quickly. You can avoid the mistakes I made. So just by listening and paying attention to your education and other things, mm. except girls, they'll always be there, you know, and your friends will always date at school, you know. When you go to varsity, there'll be another girl. When you finish varsity, there'll be another girl, you know. So for me, it's like, just don't rush don't it. Don't rush. Don't rush Absolutely. it. So we just talk about it casually. I don't want to make it seem like it's a very, like it's a hidden secret because mm. I guess it creates the curiosity for them to want to go see who to munchani or whatever, hey, you know. Mm -hmm. so hey, what's this yeah. thing? What is yeah. this they don't thing? Want you, to know you know, about. like, mm. so it's better if you have it in a conversation. I mean, we, we laugh about a lot of things all the time. So we yeah, try and make yeah. it easy to talk about. So, Toles Mo, tell me, if yes. I'm a parent, I'm a dad, I have a son, mm. what, I, what would your advice be in having this talk with my son? Be, you know what, try not to make your child feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it has to be in a light environment. It's either you go on a drive or you go out to the movies or whatever, or you, you go to the, to the park. And then you have that conversation, you know. Sometimes you don't want to have that conversation in front of mama because it's, it's, it's a bit awkward, you know. Sometimes they don't, he doesn't want to talk about girls to his mom. Or if he feels comfortable, he does. But then when we had our man on man, it had to be just me and him. And we spoke about the birds and the bees. Has he come to you with anything specific? This one girl broke his heart. Hey, but then hey, we don't hey, want to talk about her right now. <laughs> yeah. TK. So, Honestly, um, okay, um, about this topic of how you talk, uh, the talk. Actually, the, the weirdest thing was that my dad came at the weirdest time because I was in the bathroom. Mm. And as I'm about to leave, he just comes in, he closes the door, and then he tells me to sit down. So I'm sitting right there at the edge of the bathtub. He's on the toilet and he's talking. And now I was stunned, honestly, because I didn't see it coming. He's like, I know the things you know, you think I don't know. So I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. So yeah, it was a bit shocking, but. Were you relieved was, though, at least? Yeah, I was relieved. I was very relieved. So you know to turn to them if there's anything. Yeah. Yep. That you have questions about. Yeah. yeah. Respect yeah. yourself first. That's the most important thing. Mm. Always teach them, respect yourself first, love yourself. Then the world will give you the very same. Yes. And if they're not giving you what you are worth, you will know, Hori. I love myself wow. more than this situation, so I'm gonna back up. Yes. Yeah. Let's bring Kumo into this. What's up? Kumo. If um, actually so listen to the question. Let listen me ask question. you, do you know about your body? Mm -hmm. What do you know? I know very well. Like my body of the legs, like when I less want to walk, I just walk like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like even when I like want to have food, like I just ask my dad to like cook me chicken mm -hmm. and toast. So what about but your body? What what about, about your body? body. Well, well, you. what, tell me about your body and other people. Are other people allowed to touch you? So so actually when other people touch me and my dad says no people allowed to touch me, but some people. Only what? Mommy and daddy and family? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. But a bit like when something happens, my brother, he always fights for my choice. So I just <laughs> pull it out. So I just sneak, sneak when he's sleeping. I just grab my toy quickly okay. and run away. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, Mama, I know that you're working on a makeup range for little kids. Yeah. Aren't you worried about over-sexualizing her? Okay, it's not really makeup range. It's actually like your hand lotion, oh, your body spritz. The body spritz, the whole thing is about teaching our young girls, you know, to love themselves and keep clean at a young age. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like it when her dad has dry lips. She doesn't like, last night she jumped out of bed and said, mommy, I can't sleep, my lips are dry. Yeah. And she'll go and moisturize her lips, oh, you know, and, and washing your hands and moisturizing. That's why the flavors are so much fun for kids, okay. you know, so yeah. that's yeah. the whole well, point. Well, good luck with that. Good luck, Kumo. <laughs>
Tell them where to get your Good stuff. Good luck. Where to get your things from. Oh, we'll follow her on Instagram. <laughs> well, after the break, I'll announce this week's winner of the Huawei competition. Thank you so much to this fabulous family. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having us. Welcome back to Real Talk. We've been running a hashtag Real Talk Moments competition over the past couple of weeks. Check out our social media for more details. But in the meantime, have a look at this. So today's gonna be a really emotional day for me and it's gonna make me realize how fortunate I actually am. I'm on my way to a place called Lombano Sanctuary, which is a hospice for kids that are terminally ill. I'm gonna go meet a young lady by the name of Tando. She's 13 years old. She's got a terminal blood disorder and she also has TB. And with the help of Reach for a Dream, our friends at Yway and MTN, we're gonna hopefully make her dream come true and I hope that we can put a smile on her face. Reach for a Dream, what we do, we inspire hope for the children that they have life-threatening illnesses. And I found Tando at Lambano Hospital. So today I'm happy that her dream is coming true. And I hope that she will be inspired by Reach for a Dream Foundation. It's our hope that we are able to get every single child out to go back home. Um, but we also try and come alongside them with home-based care. Hello Tando, how are you doing? Bye. My name's Janez. Are you feeling strong today? Yes. Hey, you've got lots of energy. What's your biggest dream? What do you want to do? Uh, to get a laptop. A laptop? And you want to go to the movies? Yes. And you want to go to a nice restaurant? Yes. Hey, should we go do it? We're going to have some fun today, okay? From what I've heard, she's also pretty much given up. She's refusing to take her medication, which is vital to keep her alive. And today, I just want to give her a glimmer of hope I want to change your mindset. How's it, guys? I'm here chilling in the car with my good friend Tando, who's such a strong young lady. I've organized a special gift from MTN and Huawei at the end of the day that we're going to give to you, a little goodie bag with everything that you're going to love. Yeah. Say hi to the camera, wave. Hi, guys. Hi. There we go. For me, the biggest highlight of all was the fact that, that young Tando had never been to a cinema before. And that really is the one thing that, I mean, all of us completely take for granted. This girl's never gone to a cinema before and she was so excited. And then having her sit down for the first time with that, with that screen light up and, and the, the sound, the surround sound activating and seeing that smile on her face gets me emotional, gives me goosebumps. This is the first time you've ever been in a cinema? Yeah. Hello world, I'm here with Tando, the bravest young girl in the whole world. And she is watching a movie for the first time in her life. In an empty cinema, there's no one here. We've got all the basics, we've got popcorn, we've got Smarties, we've got a green slash. Enjoy, enjoy. <laughs> enjoy. Tell me, what did you think of your first movie ever? Huh? Enjoy it. <laughs> it was funny. Eh? You know what I think? I think it's time we go open all these presents. What do you think? <laughs> what I tried to do today is I tried to capture everything on my Huawei and because these are memories I'm going to cherish for the rest of my life. And they're also they're things I want to share with everyone else. I want to show my wife, I want to show my kids, I want to show my friends. <laughs> If I put the medication, I will worse and then I will be worse. I will be worse. I've had the best day ever. Thank you so much. I hope you've had fun. Now tell me, Tando, what was your biggest dream in life? Uh, to get a laptop. A laptop. Thanks to the people from Reach for a Dream, 
you have a brand new laptop that you can use as of tonight. Yeah. And on top of that, my friends at Huawei have got you a whole bag full of goodies. Should we have a look what's inside? Yeah. This is a Huawei tablet. You know what a tablet is? It's like a small laptop. So whenever you go anywhere to the hospital, to your parents, you take this one with you. Are you going to promise me one thing? Yeah. That from today onwards, you're going to take your medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Should we send a nice video to Real Talk? Yes. Let's do it. Hello, Real Talk. <laughs> Tanda and I have had the best day ever. But I just want to say thank you to, obviously, to Reach for a Dream for making Tanda's dream come true. And then to, to our friends, Huawei and MTN, thank you for making this dream possible. Bye bye, guys. Ah, uh, Yanez, I think you were the lucky one to be in her, oh, in her presence. That breaks my heart. Yeah. Uh, this, you know what, we, we're so caught up in running our own race, living in our own little cocoon, that we sometimes forget the importance of, of the plights of other people out yes. there in our country. And there's so many young children out there that are, that are fighting for their lives and they just yeah. don't have the support. And if all of us can just take the moment to to actually reflect on, on what other people's needs are as well, instead of Absolutely. thinking about our own Remember things. Remember how precious life oh, is. Gratitude what always. A well done, Yanis. What a platform. Well done. Well, that was absolutely amazing. To top it off, we have a winner to announce. Congratulations to Katleho Makodi. You, Katleho, has won himself a Huawei P20 Pro Plus 10 gig MTN once-off data. And remember to send us your entries as well, encapsulating the week's theme by posting an original image or 60-second video uh, to stand a chance to win and be a winner. Thank you so much to all my guests. We've run out of time. Sadly, we couldn't continue our conversation. But to thank Thank you to all those who joined us on the discussion about sex education for our children. It's never too early to talk about sex with your children. Talking about it and sexuality and our bodies from when your child is young can help your child understand what sex and sexuality are all about. That it's perfectly normal and it's healthy. Uh, for their lives. So do open up, try as best as you can to engage in that conversation. From myself, Azania, and the rest of the Real Talk team, we'll see you again tomorrow at 6 p.m. Isitingo's next. Good night. Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN.